How do you build a movement? Um, is that even the right question? Is a movement something that you consciously build? Uh, to me, a movement is something that happens. And maybe what we can do is create the conditions for a movement to happen. And I think that the conditions um, involve changing the narrative that, that surrounds us, uh, the story that we live in, disrupting the old story, and offering a new story. Or maybe not a new story, but, but many, many new stories that are all kind of in service to some overarching new mythology that's emerging uh, upon which a different kind of civilization could be built. Yeah, I see like activism on some level as always disrupting a story or offering a new story or both. And for example, in Ferguson, Missouri, you know, there are people out on the streets using all kinds of ways to disrupt the story of normal. The story that, that you know, race relations in this society are basically fine and, and, and black people are pretty much okay with it and we've pretty much solved the racism problem. Right? Like that's, that's a story that many white Americans have been living in. And these actions in Ferguson are making that story impossible to maintain. And when one's, when, when one's story falls apart, then there's like this moment of, of unknowing, this moment of, I don't know, this moment of wondering, wow, what's real? What's important? What's, what's who am I even? You know, it's, it's very disorienting, but that's that fertile ground from which something new can arise. And I think that, that all of us have the capacity to disrupt stories in various ways. Sometimes it's very confrontational, uh, and other times it's just through uh, kindness, uh, small acts of compassion, forgiveness, unconditional love, you know, that just violate someone's world. You know, like, they, they, that's a data point that doesn't fit in. Sometimes even something as small as, as leaving an inappropriately large tip, you know, with, in the right circumstances, that can be really powerful. And I'm not saying that that's a substitute for other kinds of action. But we have to be careful that we're not disrupting the story on one level and reinforcing it on a deeper level. So for example, there are these March Against Monsanto movements. Uh, so on the one hand, they're perhaps disrupting the story of you know, agricultural science creating a world of plenty for all of us through the miracle of genetic engineering. Okay? That, that perhaps they're effectively disrupting the story, but they might be feeding a story of those bad guys in the corporate offices. If we could only defeat and destroy and humiliate and punish them, then the world would be a better place. That's the story called Conquering the Bad Guy, which is programmed into us deeply. Every movie, every action movie has the same plot. Inexplicably evil person is causing a big problem. And solution, you humiliate, destroy, usually kill that evil person. And this is a poison uh, in, our, in the world of activism even, because in fact, the problem isn't some evil people who happen to have gained the reins of power. We have a system that makes people evil when they occupy these positions, even if they're really good people. You know, you're in that position and your role is pretty much dictated by the structure you're in. You become a functionary, which is one reason why the people we think have power don't actually have power. Who really has the power? It's the people who are not enslaved by the story that's running society. And sometimes, even if that's a person of no privilege whatsoever, someone in a township, you know, in a ghetto, they can cause tremendous changes. Just one of them can, can spark huge changes. I mean, imagine what would happen if all of us understood our, our power.